Hey yo everybody, Zach Cords here with RevZill and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider. Our guest today, Honda's NC750XDCT, which at first glance looks like a regular old motorcycle, but it's actually got some tricks up its sleeve. Most notably, a dual clutch automatic transmission and lockable waterproof scooter-like storage. Plus, MSRP is only 8,500 bucks, which on paper makes it a pretty good daily rider. And as you can imagine, that makes me very excited. <laughs> so let's get right. <laughs> All right, everybody. NC 750. Like I said, when you first see it, it uh, looks like a pretty conventional motorcycle, right? Sort of a uh, kind of modern, upright, everyday motorbike. So this is the 745cc parallel twin. Um, and what you might notice about it, a couple things. One, uh, it says dual clutch transmission here. <laughs> uh, we'll talk more about how that works when we're riding. Um, but also that the cylinder is kind of laid down, right? Um, normally parallel twins are a little more upright. This one's are laid down and that creates a lot of space in this area, um, which is where uh, the intake is. And normally the gas tank would be here, but on the NC750, the gas tank is here under the seat. Not the first bike to do that, but um, what Honda was able to achieve by laying the engine down and putting the gas there is uh, a big old storage compartment here. Front trunk or frunk, which holds uh, a full-size helmet. This is a medium RF1200 that I tucked in there for demonstration's sake. It's 23 liters of storage, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, that's sort of the, those are the party tricks that the NC750 does. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, um, really basic kind of lawn furniture swing arm, <laughs> um, steel tube frame, right set up fork, single front disc, um, Nissan caliper, 320 mil rotor, which is pretty big, but um, only one of them. And yeah, 17 inch wheels, upright riding position. Uh, the rest of it's pretty, pretty basic, you might say. And with that, we will fire it up uh, this 750cc engine. You can take a look at this uh, pretty simple little two color LCD dash and a sort of a little thumpy exhaust note. Uh, yeah, I think we're just about ready to ride. Um, the only difference today is that instead of grabbing a clutch lever and putting my toe on the shifter, I'm just going to reach over here this little. Um, button here, <laughs> rocker switch, and uh, you'll see it's in neutral. And if I push D, you'll hear a little click, Cook. and we're in drive. And uh, now we just twist the throttle and we go. No clutch engagement by the rider necessary whatsoever. First, a typical run through of specifications as we normally do here on Daily Rider. Um, we mentioned the engine size. Uh, Honda does not have claimed numbers for horsepower and torque. Um, rarely do in my experience, especially not a bike like this because they're not going to really make a lot of noise about it. If you Google um, NC750 dyno numbers, you'll see what I saw, which um, is like low 50s for horsepower and about 50 foot pounds of torque. Um, and obviously, you know, that's a, it's significant, not because the numbers are big, but because the numbers are similar. Uh, you don't normally see torque numbers that are almost as high as the horsepower, unless it's like a, you know, Goldwing or a Rocket 3 or something. Um, we'll talk more about engine dynamic later. Um, but yeah, not gonna knock your socks off with performance as we'll find out. Um, weight was 493 pounds with a full 3.7 gallons of fuel under the seat. And that'll be higher than you see on the Honda website. The weight listed is for the manual transmission and the DCT does weigh more. Anyway, uh, that was what it tipped the scale, the Daily Rider scales at. And last specification, 31.6 inch seat height, which is pretty approachable. The only real downside to the approachability of this bike is the weight, which better part of 500 pounds is, is, is a little bit big for a motorcycle. Normally we talk about riding position at this point in the ride, but I do want to address the dual clutch transmission before I forget. 
And also, if you're not familiar with the DCT, it could be one of your biggest curiosities. So a quick explanation, I'm not gonna get into super technical details, but basically the way it works, it's not a uh, CVT style transmission like on a scooter. It's basically a standard motorcycle sequential gear transmission with two clutches. And uh, one of the clutches works for first gear, third gear, and fifth gear. The other clutch works for second gear, fourth gear, and sixth gear. The clutches disengage and engage at appropriate timing so that the, the gearing of the bike changes without there being an interruption with a clutch pull. It's pretty nifty technology. It's something Honda's been working on for a long time. And uh, the DCT option on motorcycles has been around for more than 10 years now. And it's been slowly refined and uh, worked through. And um, I would have to say it's better than ever. All right, we're merging out onto the open road here. And now we can talk about uh, ergonomics and uh, rider triangle and that kind of thing. You probably won't be surprised to hear that the NC750 is a very uh, reasonable motorcycle. Reasonable is kind of its middle name. The only uh, two things that I don't get along with on the NC750, uh, in part because of my size, at a couple inches over six feet tall, one of which is legroom, which I think because Honda tried to make the seat nice and low for it to be approachable for people, um, the seat to pig ratio is a little tight. There's, It's not uncomfortable, it's not like a sport bike or anything, it's just less legroom than I was expecting on a bike styled like this. Um, and the other thing you start to notice at about this speed, 65 miles an hour or so, um, this is a little uh, windscreen here is, uh, it does a good job pushing air away from my torso, I'll say that, but all the turbulent air kind of hits right at the bottom of my helmet and it makes it kind of loud. And you might be hearing that actually in the microphone. Uh, so if it was my bike, I would either cut this down, like trim down the windscreen or, or find a smaller one. Uh, so that my helmet was in clean air, or I would get a slightly larger one, a couple bit higher, so that um, it would cover a little bit more of my helmet as I rode. But in general, it's a really comfortable place to sit. The seat's nice, good for many hours on the road if that's what you want to do. And of course, it's not a very tall seat, so that's good news for shorter riders. Another thing that uh, the NC750 does not have, which I've seen lots of people complain about, is cruise control. I, I can understand, you know, cruise control is always great. I get it. But I do think that from a branding standpoint, Honda has presented the NC series, NC700 before it, and now the NC750, which incidentally is short for new concept, I believe, on account of the, um, you know, slightly different design that it represents. Uh, the, Honda's always presented it as a simple kind of bike. You know, it's never supposed to be luxury or, or kind of like high end. Uh, it includes the, the dual clutch technology, which is admittedly complex. But aside from that, you know, from a user standpoint, I think it's always supposed to be just easy to approach, easy to use, easy to maintain, that kind of thing. Now's the point where we usually talk about fuel mileage. Um, Eagle-eyed viewers will see that uh, the average for this trip is 57.1, according to the bike's computer which is um, in keeping with the numbers that I've seen in my own calculations. The worst gas mileage I got on this bike so far was 50, five zero. And the best uh, tank was 61, which uh, is pretty good. I mean, it's not often you get 61 miles per gallon on a bike with an engine that's 750 cc's. You know, that's um, usually reserved for um, small scooters and that kind of thing. And to take the fuel conversation a step further, I did actually see someone say that they were disappointed that the 3.7 gallon fuel tank was not larger, which is kind of, I mean, 3.7 is kind of small, but uh, you know, if you get 55, 60 miles a gallon, you're talking more than 200 miles, which I think is a pretty, uh, pretty fair number to get out of a, uh, for fuel range from a motorcycle. Last thing we usually talk about on this stretch of road is mirrors. I'm sure it'll come as no surprise that the mirrors on the NC750 are excellent. Very, very good. Good shape, just smooth as can be. I mean, in, in keeping again with the, <laughs> the mantra of this motorcycle, which is sort of to be the, the pocket protector of motorcycles. Make great sense above all things. All right, and here we go, trundling into the neighborhood. 
we'll do our stop sign challenge where we try to do oh, pull out in front of me please thank you so much we try to do a zero mile an hour stop without putting our feet down and it'll be interesting with the automatic clutch right oh first one pretty good pretty good a little bit of rear brake that helps me control it sometimes this is an area where the dct has gotten a lot better i think uh, I remember originally riding the NC700 probably 10 years ago-ish. Uh, I think it was 2012 actually that the bike first came to the US, memory serves. And uh, the DCT was kind of, it was a little bit abrupt. Like it would slip the clutch enough to get going, but then it would kind of dump the clutch a little bit and it wasn't super refined. Um, and this version's better. It, as you, if you hit the gas hard away from a stop, it slips it a little bit longer. Um, we'll see if we can demonstrate here. So we'll get on the gas a little harder. Oop, I had to put my foot down. So if I get on the gas harder, it slips the clutch a little bit more gently. It's, uh, yeah, it's good. And it is very predictable. I think you, it's it's similar to riding a scooter with a CVT in so much as you get used to twisting the throttle and when the power hits and when the clutch engages. And I adapted to it pretty fast. I, I do ride a lot of different bikes, uh, so that probably helps, but in general, it's, it's a lot easier to use and, and kind of less disconcerting, I think, than people are worried it will be. Oh, I got a left turn in front of us. We're gonna have to stop for a long time. Oh, look at that. We did it, even with the left turn in front of us. That was a good one. Uh, that brings me to another point, which is what the NC750 has going for it, which is uh, low center of gravity. Um, the wheelbase is kind of long for a bike this size. I think it's, I think it's maybe more than 60 inches, um, which is always kind of a, a benchmark of a long wheelbase in my mind, anyway. Um, but because the engine is slung down low and the fuel's under the seat, and the only thing here is my helmet, basically uh, a lot of the weight is very low, which helps uh, with low-speed maneuverability, as you might expect. Now, this traffic light usually takes a dog's age, so let's talk about the dash, shall we? Um, pretty simple dash, a fuel gauge upper left, time up in the middle there. I can put it in neutral so I can rev it up, that'll be fun. And you can uh, see the bar tack goes across the top there. Um, yeah, gear position indicator, all that kind of pretty standard. Um, and then, uh, yeah, down at the bottom here, you got a couple of different parameters. You can cycle through trip meters and... Uh, where we looked to find air temp but couldn't earlier. <laughs> uh, I like seeing the average fuel mileage. Let's bring that back up here. Yeah. And then uh, ride modes. So you got standard, you got sport, you got a user mode that you can customize, rain, and then um, and then your standard mode, which um, yeah is is my favorite. I think it just seems the most reasonable, and I like to lug an engine anyway, so that's the one I usually stick with. To be more specific about the ride modes. Um, there are parameters there. The user one is customizable for um, for power delivery, power map, uh, engine braking, trash control, and the drive mode, uh, which has a few settings. So I appreciate that Honda did that because after all, the the bike is shifting for you. So you know it stands to reason that um, we motorcyclists would want some amount of customizability there, and um, you know you have it, which is nice. All right, Lover's Lane, looking kind of spooky today with all this fog around. And the passenger report, fairly simple on the NC750. Uh, my lady friend said it was good. She expected the, the seat to be a little higher in the back so she could see over my shoulders a little better. But in general, said it was uh, pretty comfortable. Not, not a lot of complaints. Uh, not, you know, sort of a passenger, passenger review is similar to the uh, what a rider's review might be of the NC750, <laughs> which is like, yeah, that's well, fine. It's pretty good. I've touched on the efficiency of the engine uh, a couple times so far, and one of the reasons is that it upshifts very uh, liberally. <laughs> uh, very so We're going 40 miles an hour in fifth gear. Uh, that's what the bike has chosen to do because it's pulling 2,500 RPM, and it means we're getting pretty good mileage. Um, and the way that it works is if you, you know, if you twist the throttle, if I open it, it downshifts to fourth and then accelerates. But of course you don't make that decision as the rider, which is a little weird. I'll admit that. Yeah, you know, it's just another one of the one of the quirks of the NC750. I could put the NC750 into sport mode, 
but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to reach down and push this button here next to the um, uh, gear selector where it says A slash M, and I'm going to tap it so that we're in M. And what M means, for what it's worth, is manual. So now I can downshift and upshift with my thumb and left index finger as I please, and we can sportily attack these curves on the NC750. <laughs> Again, not gonna, you know, snap your neck back with acceleration. But another nifty feature of the um, automatic transmission that you can sort of, um, sort of like a car paddle shifter, you can decide when you want it to make the gear change. And uh, it's, yeah, it's different than a conventional transmission <laughs> in a lot of ways, and it's not, um, doesn't give you the same satisfaction, I don't think, but it's, it's, I appreciate that Honda applied that to the bike and, and gives you some amount of control. I should say that in this manual mode, if you come to a stop, uh, it will downshift to first for you. So it, it'll make that decision for you because it'll eventually, the RPMs will go so low that the engine can't do that and it'll downshift for you. But if you downshift to first gear and you want to just go, there we go, bouncing off the rev limiter in first gear, you can do that if you want to. I don't know why you'd want to do that. We got a yellow light. Let's talk about brakes, shall we? Get into the ABS a little bit, yeah. The, um, the weight of the bike at, you know, 500 pounds basically, and one disc up front it's a little bit suspicious and I will say the brakes are not the front brake especially is not Tuned the way I like I like lots of bite when you first get on the brake to have a nice sharp bite from the pads But I don't think that that suits the personality of NC 750 and I think that's probably one of the reasons that the bike doesn't feel that way And so I don't I'm not gonna condemn the the machine for that or Honda because I think it arguably makes some sense and the truth is when you when you do jump on the brakes even if the bite isn't super severe at the beginning, if you if you squeeze hard on the lever, there's lots of power there. So, in general, yeah, not a lot of complaints. On the topic of brakes, actually, the bike is defaults to being in neutral when you're stopped, parked, uh, or otherwise, you know, kickstand down, basically. So, you might be thinking, what if I park on a hill? I'm just gonna roll away, I can't leave it in gear. Good point. And uh, Honda, applied an emergency brake. So there you go. E-brake on, in neutral, can't move the bike. And then you just, uh, you know, disengage it with that little button there. Another little quirky feature of an NC750, an emergency brake. <laughs> and away we go. Giving it full stick. Rap. <laughs> Not a particularly frisky engine, no. It's, um, as I talked about in specs in the beginning, you know, it's, it's torque rich and uh, not a lot happens when you rev it up. It's really not designed to do that. But I will say, shooting away from uh, stoplights or stop signs, it's, uh, you're really in the meat of the, of the power for the engine, which makes it kind of fun. And actually, I'll go a step further and say that a lot of modern engines start to feel kind of like this, if you think about it, you know, like the big, 270 crank parallel twin triumphs and uh, Yamaha's 700 cc parallel twin they have in the R7 and MT-07 Tenere 700 those engines are more playful than this one certainly but the it's not totally different I mean the they're, they're very they're, they're torque rich and and they have a lot of grunt and it's fun to use around town but there's been an interesting skew toward that type of engine since the NC 700 came out a decade ago um, and I think that it speaks to people's interests of, 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 you know, using an engine in, in a way that is more practical than having a, an R6 engine that makes awesome power above 12,000 RPM, but you don't really, it's like hard to spend time at that high in RPM realistically. Oh, the bump is always a little bigger than I expect. And actually... That reminds me to talk a little bit about the suspension, <laughs> which 
it's not bad on the NC750. It's just kind of, uh, it's just a little bit unrefined for what I've come to expect from Honda. It feels a little harsh, like it's kind of sitting low in the stroke and when you hit a sharp bump, uh, you get a kind of a jolt in your wrist and I don't think it's like unwieldy or, or dangerous in any way. Um, but worth noting that uh, I think the tuning could be a little better from the factory. Anyway, here we go into the off-road section of our daily ride. And, um, you know, maybe maybe some people wouldn't be thinking that uh, this is a very astute thing to do with uh, an NC750, but it does kind of have a quasi-ADV look to it, right? So uh, it kind of makes sense. So let's see if we can turn off the uh, trash control here. Yeah, here we go. TC, I'm going to turn down. I'm going to hold the down button. Yeah, there we go. TC off. We get a light up here. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now we're in user mode. We have no trash control, automatic transmission, and we're gonna get Swayze on this NC750. <laughs> Just like any bike. Oh, that's a nasty rock. I always hit that. Um, just like any bike, it's more fun with track control off, especially when you're in the dirt. Uh, we, can, we can hit these little rollers here. Oh my gosh, the sand is pretty sketchy. <laughs> There's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of travel uh, in general. I think it's less than five inches, maybe 4.7 inches front and back, so it's not, not a ton there. A little jumpy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, ABS is freaking out in the gravel. Whoo boy, that was a wild ride. All right, kicking up some more dust out on to the tarmac where this little sucker belongs. All right, let's go to manual mode. I'm gonna go down to first gear and we're gonna see if we can coax a wheelie out of this sucker. <laughs> and I think peak torque is like 4,500 RPM, so let's here. <laughs> Oh boy, that's a feeble little wheelie. What about um, passenger pegs? <laughs> a little bit better. Not much of a wheelie though. You can definitely wheelie it. It's doable. Just got uh, need to take more time than than I have, I guess. <laughs> can we back it in? Not really. Certainly not where there's an ambulance. The ambulance driver's looking at her phone. Also, that's a nice touch. Anywho, I should mention that um, you can actually use the manual shifters um, in the automatic mode as well, for what it's worth. So you can, uh, yeah, you can ask, you can request that the bike shift. And sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. <laughs> um, but that's handy, I think, at low speed, especially in the first and second gear area, because that's a place where the, the dual clutch transmission is a little bit clunky sometimes when it thinks you're gonna go a little slower and then it downshifts the first right as you get on the gas and it's a little herky-jerky. Um, you know, it's it's a really tough thing to predict, I think, so I'm not gonna be too hard on the on the bike, but that's definitely a, a place where I tend to use the manual shifting. Okay, U-turn test. Get as close to this van as we can. Oh, oh God, I have to put my foot down. That's embarrassing. Full lock, no feet down. Eh, eh, two plus, yeah, two, two plus parking spaces, which I don't know, I was thinking this bike maybe will do it in two parking spaces. It feel, feels pretty good, low speed. No complaints about the turning radius, um, just about the, the transmission sometimes doing U-turns. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting a little bit off topic. Um, I got to, uh, whoop, oh, I killed the, <laughs> Killed the engine because it didn't put it in neutral. So normally the kickstand up and you're in drive, you gotta like tap neutral, put it neutral, then put the kickstand down. Then get off in the parking lot to rev it up and super impress your friends. <laughs> it's kind of a cool noise, I think, actually. Um, certainly a cooler noise than, um, than the bike has a reputation for being. Which, you know, it, it definitely... Like I said, has a reputation for being sort of the pack protector of bikes, a little bit dorky and practical, but uh, you know, I can't fault it for what it is. It's it's unapologetic. I kind of like that about it. All right, before we get into Instagram questions, uh, I just check my documents, see if uh, there's anything I forgot to talk about. Oh yeah, um, 
So this is a, a statistic from August of 2020. In the past 12 months, 57% of gold wings and 38% of Africa twins sold in the U.S. were DCTs. That is an illustration of how popular the DCT has become. More than half of gold wings in, from, you know, middle of 2019 to middle of 2020 were uh, automatic DCTs, which arguably makes sense with a gold wing, right? Um, but even, you know, almost 40% of Africa twins, um, which might be seem like a high number to you. And I don't know what the spec is or the statistic is for... NCs, but I would think it's uh, fairly high as well. Um, so there you go. All right. First question here is from Tamim59, who asks, uh, "Can it be? Or can you it be? Can can it be someone's first bike, or is it too much?" I think that's the question. And uh, absolutely be for someone's first bike, for sure. A little bit heavy, so I'd swing a leg over it at a showroom or something like that to make sure you feel comfortable with the, the weight and the size of it. But uh, as far as temperament and, and performance and capability and maintenance and dealer network and all that stuff, I mean, yeah, great first bike, as long as the, the size and weight's okay with you. So uh, ride safe. <laughs> Next question is from Occasional Spoonerism, who asks, how does it compare to the NC700X? Is there a noticeable bump in power or is it pretty much the same bike? Yeah, so good question. The red line went up from about 6,000 RPM to about 7,000 RPM, which of course is a pretty big jump. The displacement came by way of bore. It used to be a 73 mil bore with an 80 mil stroke. Um, which is under square, they call that. And uh, that's uncommon in motorcycle engines. Almost all motorcycle engines are over square. Uh, and they added bore to this one, so it's a 77 mil bore with an 80 mil stroke, still under square but less so. Um, so it's moving a little bit more toward a traditional motorcycle engine. And uh, yeah, it does, it arguably feels a little bit more traditional in that sense, slightly higher red line, a um, little bit less anemic in the top of the revs, but still definitely a gentle demeanor for sure. While we're on the topic of the NC700X, actually, I did notice in my research um, to do with the seat height that the NC700 that I rode in 2012, uh, we listed the seat height at 32.7 inches. That is 1.1 inches higher than the 31.6 it is now, which I think might be one of the reasons that seat felt surprisingly low. Next question is from Nate Baird, who says, that frunk is crunk. Will it fit an ADV style helmet with a peak? Um, I don't think so, no. I think um, we, so this is, uh, this again is a medium um, RF1400 that's in here, but Aerie tried to put a small GT Air in there and it did not fit, uh, in part because the GT Air has some like facets on the back of the helmet, um, some kind of like aerodynamic stuff that um, I feel like made it, made it so that it didn't fit. Um, my old RF1200 showy, uh, with a communicator on it does fit in there. So it's like, it's a little bit tricky to know exactly what's going to fit and what's not. I don't think an ADV helmet with a peak will fit, um, but maybe if you took it off and tucked it inside or something, it would work. Next question is from Mark E who asks, automatic transmission built in storage. Why not buy a big scooter instead? Fair question, right? A um, couple things though. I guess one, you can get this with a manual transmission, in which case you get a, you know, polite, gentle, uh, commuter bike, but it has manual transmission and it has the, the, you know, waterproof storage and that kind of thing, which I think is pretty neat. So it's sort of a, it's a bridge concept in some ways, which I think is fair. Another reason I think is just the look of it, right? Like maybe you don't want to, maybe you do want a scooter, but you don't want to look like you're riding a scooter. And, uh, I think that's fair, right? I mean, people buy R6s instead of MT-09s cause they want to look dope and like they're riding a sport bike, but there's an R6 isn't better than an MT-09. In, I mean, if you're going to the racetrack or something, maybe, but like as a sport bike on twisty roads or something, it's not better in any appreciable way. It's just people want to look cool. They want to look like they're on a sport bike. And if you want to look like you're on a quasi ADV kind of, you know, bike commuting across the city, you don't want to look like you're on a scooter. I think that's fair. Next question is from Danny Wecker, who says, does it spark joy? <laughs> Which I like this question. Um, you know, it has a reputation for being a dorky dad bike, whatever. We talked about that. For me, it does spark joy because I just think anything with two wheels and an engine is great. And I think that it has, I like that it has a specific purpose and it separates itself in a certain way. Um, so, yeah. And I also think that, you know, there was so much hate I got on the Instagram post for this bike. People being like, oh, automatic transmission so lame. Like, barf. Uh, that bike shouldn't even exist. Like, if you can't shift a transmission, you shouldn't even ride a motorcycle. And... I just don't agree with that at all. I feel like, you know, if you hear some band playing that you don't like, you know, and someone's like, I'm going to see that band. I don't personally, I don't think, oh man, that's, uh, they shouldn't even allow that band to have concerts. It's so lame. No, 
course not. It's a ridiculous thing to say. You should think like, all right, well, I don't want to hear that person play music, or that band play music, but if someone else does, cool, enjoy. And that's how you should feel about this bike, in my opinion. All right, maybe enough life lectures for now. Last question is from Smeds or S Smeds or Smed Z, one of those, um, who asks if you could describe its character, personality, in a single word or name, what would it be? Love this question. I should I, I should do this with all bikes. <laughs> um, I want to say like practical or something, but that's like a little bit of a that's phoning it in. I think what I would say is thoughtful. That's how I would. It's it's the it, yeah, it, it's a very thoughtfully designed bike, and that's what I think is is special about it, you know? You might think that it's too slow or too heavy or or too expensive or if whatever whatever you problem you have with it, but you can't deny that it's a different take on a motorcycle. And, and, it, and it has it has features and capabilities and and a, and a sort of a mantra and a goal that is a little bit different than than most motorcycles. And I think I really appreciate that. Thanks, as always, for your awesome Instagram questions. Um, let's put the sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard and I can let you go. Okay. Hey, everybody. Here we are inside Revzilla West Daily Rider leaderboard. Spurge looking over our shoulder, as usual. <laughs> uh, and we have Honda's NC750 XDCT ready to go on the board. Um, pretty safe to say it's going to be up near the top, right? Friendly reminder, what is up at the top there? Um, BMW GS. Ducati Multistrada, Kawasaki Versus, and yeah, NC750 is going to be near the top, right? I mean, that thing was made for the daily ride, was it not? Versus 650, what do you think? I don't think so. Versus 650 is more fun, better wheelies, more energy, almost as good gas mileage, technically does come with luggage, right? It comes with saddlebags. So Versus 650 is going to keep that spot. Is it better than a Tracer 9 GT? Uh, it's simpler and everything, and this bike's kind of expensive, but it's way too much fun. Tracer 9 GT, way too much fun. Quick shifter, ripping engine, lots of technology. Also comes with some saddlebags, so we give it a, like a little bit of a half, half point there. Triumph Tiger 850 Sport, the, the daily rider that time forgot. <laughs> uh, no one ever talks about this bike. Very good daily rider. Also not especially interesting, though. Uh, so, yeah, we're going here. In betwixt the Tracer 9 GT and the Triumph Tiger 850 Sport. So that is a top five finish <laughs> for the NC750, uh, which I think is pretty darn good. All right, and the leaderboard again, getting pretty full. I think we have room for one more bike, maybe two, and then we'll do a reset. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, uh, thank you for sticking around for this ride. As usual, I hope you enjoyed yourself at least a little bit and hope you learned a thing or two. See you next time, everybody. Corvette guy, give Corvette guy a little rev. All right, can't really give him a rev. <laughs> I don't think Corvette guy would be particularly enthralled with the NC750. It doesn't seem like a Corvette kind of motorcycle, does it? Unless Corvette guy likes the automatic transmission. Oh, can you imagine the scandal of our Corvette guy only having automatics? Oh boy, that would be juicy.